This entitled parent spends all her husband's money to make her dream come true, buying a farm. But instead of working hard, she sits around and watches TV all day while the family goes bankrupt. What ultimatum does her husband give her? Happy birthday, today's your birthday, and on with the revamp show. My dad met and took up with my stepmom when I was three. My biological mom had disappeared off into the big blue ocean on a yacht for the third time, not believing my dad when he said if you leave the kids and I again, we are done. By the time she returned three months later, my stepmom had decided that this rather wealthy, handsome and charming man was a catch and sank her claws into him. To her credit, she was also taking on three kids, three, four and six years of age. However, at this time, we had people to do everything for us. Nannies for us children, a chef who everyone would call fish, people to come clean the house. There was a ballroom and a library and a giant teak spiral staircase. Yes, it all sounds so grandiose and silver spoon, and it was. But we lost all our money by the time I was 10 and lived in a tiny house and dad had to work disgustingly long hours in order to keep the family afloat. Stepmother dearest floated from fancy to fancy. One minute she's opening a coffee shop, the next she's selling aromatherapy oils, or she's selling swimwear or sunglasses. Basically, my dad would bankroll these things in the hope that she'd start contributing to the income. But everyone in the small community disliked her so much, they tended to avoid her. That is, except the men she was sleeping with. She had a lot of affairs, to the point that even I, an oblivious child, and still a pretty oblivious and trusting adult, thank goodness my husband is a good person, though he does love to jump out at me from behind doors and make me almost pee my pants understood that there was something not right going on. Eventually, she went one step too far, and my father finally left her in the pettiest, most perfect way. Six months after this, my elder brother got married. She attended with her son, my awesome little brother in tow. I wrote about this in a previous post, so we'll shorten it here. She basically wanted to bring my 11-year-old brother to an after party at my house cried and stormed off when she was told no, had spent all her money and wine at the bar, and so a family friend had to give her cash to make her take little bro home in a taxi. After this, she told anyone that would listen that I'd made her so unwelcome that she wouldn't be attending my brother's other wedding in the community we are from. However, the reason she didn't attend was that she expected my dad to pay for her to go, and he told her to go screw a spider. After this, I went no contact with her. I moved from Australia to England for love. After five years, the man I moved here with proposed, totally unexpectedly, because we were quite happy living in sin, and we just bought a house. Considering all the family from Oz would be coming, I have a ginormous family. Likely because there's not much else to do where we are from. We set a date for 18 months time and notified everyone quickly so that flights accommodation could be booked. I set up a group chat with everyone invited so that those who were coming could discuss who stays with who, make plans for trips out, etc. Little brother is in the group. He's 17 and finished high school, living with his mother. She doesn't believe in privacy and accesses all his messages. She obviously finds this chat and starts to crap frisbees. I received an email from her. It is long, even longer than this mammoth story, and full of passive aggressive digs. She was livid she wasn't invited. My favorite lines from it were the following. I just want to know my name, what is it that little brother's name and my bio mom's name have done for you to support you and your relationship that I haven't done. I took great pleasure in replying. Little brother is coming because he is my brother. Bio mom is coming because even though we have a fractious relationship, she has reached out to me with love and apologized for her behavior. And I quote directly from the email, she pushed me out of her vi- <laughs> Can I say that without getting demonetized? Her lady parts, and that counts for a lot. I just had my first child. I was willing to forgive the sins of my mother after she did that three times over. You are not coming because even though I attempted to build bridges with you, you willfully ignored my olive branch. I am happy to work on our relationship again, but you need to admit your behavior has been downright bullcrap. 
Ladies and gentlemen, she was speechless. At least, I assume she was, as I received no reply and no further contact. Little brother said that she told him she's not buying me a wedding gift. Terribly sorry to inform you, ex-stepmother. We requested no gifts. All we wanted for our wedding was to have the people we love there. Guess we got the gift of your absence, though. I can imagine being a family that comes from money, where you literally have servants doing everything for you, and then you're left with nothing. Yeah, it's gonna cause a bit of conflict. But I'd like to think that people could work through that, and I don't know, maybe their love for each other could pull them through. If the only thing holding your relationship together is money, then it doesn't seem destined to really stay together, does it? I've been sitting on this for a few months. Ever since I started getting familiar with Reddit terms such as entitled parents and whatnot, I had been debating on who in my cast of people I know would qualify as one. The first one that came to mind was my mother. I've been hesitant to call her an entitled mother because she was always really sweet to me. I was always a mama's boy growing up. The more I talked to my dad about it, the more things started to add up within the missing pieces of my memory from my childhood. It kinda clicked in my head. You don't have to be outwardly mean to people to qualify for the title of entitled parent. Your actions will speak for themselves. Better get comfy for this one. I know this is far longer than most EP stories. The Backstory I grew up on a 63-acre chicken farm in a small, middle-of-nowhere town. It's a really cozy little place, and may even be where I'll retire when the time comes. Who knows? The property had two different sides to it, one with a chicken house and a pasture next to it we let our neighbours use, and the other being a large clearing where we kept hay bales. This side led down to the road, and across that road was another clearing that had a pathway that led to a river. In the middle of these two halves was a large hill with our house and shop at the top. From the house, you could see all of the property. It was gorgeous. My mother also grew up on a farm and had consulted my father about raising their children on a farm, and he agreed. He was working in the trucking industry and still is to this day. He was in and out of the office, but often in my early, early life, he was out driving. By the time I was five, he had settled down in the office chair and begun dispatching trucks. That was his side of bringing in the bread, and my mother's was supposed to be the farm. It was what she wanted, a lovely house on a farm with kids playing around the yard with two lovely loyal dogs to help play and protect the children. Those golden retrievers were incredible. She and dad had done it. They were living the dream most people wish they had. Act 1, The Divorce One day, mum just stopped working her farm job. She just sat in the living room on her computer watching TV. She wasn't doing dishes, she wasn't cleaning, she wasn't doing laundry, nothing. She was throwing all their mess on their bed and they were no longer sleeping in there. Instead, they were sleeping on the couch because she wasn't cleaning anything. My dad was pulling 60 hours every week, and that's a minimum. Expecting him to come from home to do more work was just inconsiderate, especially since she wasn't even doing her job anymore. So to keep the farm afloat, dad took up arms working and managing the farm on top of his job that he was cutting hours from to keep this up. Then the fighting started. Dad would confront mum about her laziness, and she would just dodge the question or would just downplay the situation. It didn't escalate until she started spending $2,000 of the $1,500 he made every week. As my dad put it, the arguments turned into shouting, and then eventually, dad would start thrashing his arms into a shelf or the bar, knocking everything off of it and making her clean it up. Which may sound harsh, but a completely understandable response. She was costing us money for bills and food for crap we didn't need, on top of the fact that she wasn't making money herself. Despite the fact it was her that wanted the farm in the first place, and accepted the responsibility of managing the farm, my dad is a very strong family man. He would jump off a cliff if it meant the rest of his family was safe. Mum started blowing through the money that was meant to continue paying for the farm, as well as the house, which only made things worse. One day, Mum having extreme pains. 
At one point, she even went to the hospital. When she came back, she was prescribed thyroid medicine. My memory is very hazy at this part, so apologies if not everything adds up. Once she got her hands on the thyroid medicine, she got addicted. She was abusing the stuff regularly, and her hookup was her scumbag doctor. It became evident that she didn't even need it anymore, and was just taking it for whatever high she could get off of it. Author's note, I'm actually not 100% certain if it was thyroid medicine that she got addicted to. I know that's what she had prescribed, but not if it what she was addicted to. But it was definitely something that she would be supplied by a shady doctor. I'm likely claiming the wrong medication that she got addicted to. If it doesn't make sense, forgive me. But for the sake of the story, I'm just going to continue saying it was the thyroid medicine. My father confronted her about this too, and she not only said that she was still in pain, she wasn't. She was moving perfectly fine. Heck, I'd argue better than before. She used it as an excuse to not work on the farm. It was at this point Dad considered divorce, but still wanted to give her a chance. He told her she had until I was 13 to get her crap together, stop abusing the medicine, and get a job. Take a guess at what she did spent more money. Eventually, the farm just became a barren piece of land with a few chicken houses on it that had pretty much lost all business on it. At the same time, the ceiling of the laundry room had caved in overnight. Dad had gone to investigate and ended up calling an expert. Guess what? We had freaking termites eating our house up. Fantastic. At this point, I think I was about 7 or 8, so I remember seeing most of what happens next. We ended up moving in a mobile home next to our house. As in, maybe 50 feet. As in, I would see our old house right outside my window. I could clearly see into our old living room. This was where we spent the next few years on the farm, until I actually did turn 13. A few years after moving into the mobile home, Dad came home from work. He was cleaning out the closet, since it ain't been touched since goodness knows when. He found an odd box in the back, and when he opened it, it was full of just bottles and bottles of thyroid medication that were each empty. He confronted her again, and in came the excuses. That was the last straw. Dad finally snapped. This one, I was there for. At this point, I had fashioned my parents' bedroom into my own. Dad was always busy with work, and Mum was too darn lazy to do anything about it, so it became mine. This bedroom was right next to where they were arguing. Dad took everything on the island in the kitchen, and slammed everything into the ground. All the crap that was built up for however long that Mum never bothered to clean, he smashed into the ground. Cause again, Dad's pulling a crazy amount of hours trying to keep us afloat, and not only was she costing us money and not working, she was making a mess all over the house. At this point, I had thought Mum was the victim. I was a kid. I was short-sighted as heck. Little did I know how much mum freaking deserved it. My dad never laid a hand on my mother, or any woman, but I wouldn't blame if he did. I'm not saying that it would have been okay, I'm saying I would understand why he would feel the urge to. Dad would never do that anyway. Unless she was endangering someone, he would never do that to a woman, let alone his wife. The next day, Dad went to the pharmacy where the doctor who supplying mum the thyroid medication was, and tore his butt a new one. Dad ended up being banned and was just labelled the crazy guy who came in screaming at doctors just trying to do their jobs. Yeah, their jobs supplying medication addicts with medication. <laughs> Boo freaking who. Again, small town. So no surprise this small town pharmacy had a couple of loopholes in it if you catch my drift. At this point, Dad finally settled on leaving her. Before he was bluffing, but now his mind was set. He gave her a list and told her to follow it if she wanted him to stay. The list was very simple, completely reasonable, and should be expected of any spouse who isn't working. 1. Drop the freaking medication. Get a job. Until you get a job. Clean the house every day. Get the kids up and in school every day. For the love of, stop spending all of our money. Do the laundry. Cook for our kids. That was pretty much it. Dad was working his butt off and all he asked of my mother was to do her job as a mother. Can you guess how that went? $3,000 out of the bank on more useless crap. Taking crap out of my dad's credit card. 
and the mobile home deteriorating even farther. The laundries were stacked up so much, our laundry room was inaccessible. I never saw the floor of that room again. The room was the size of a closet, so it didn't take much. So, the time came. I finally turned 13. Dad waited until I was finally the age where both me and my sister were old enough to pick which parent to live with. Not only has mum done nothing to clean her butt up, but she actually made crap worse. Dad is a firm believer that you shouldn't hide your wealth from your spouse. He wasn't wealthy, but he was freaking settled. At least, he could have been. Even through all of this, he still didn't hide the amount of money he was making from mum until their divorce was final. I actually didn't learn of this principle of his until about a month ago when the topic came up. He told mum one last warning. If you don't clean your butt up on your own, you're going to end up an M head living on the streets selling your body. And he didn't mean that as an insult. It was a genuine warning. He had spent at least the last 15 years with this woman and knew how exactly she was going to turn out if she didn't heed his warning. Naturally, she took it as an insult and just played it off like he was being a jerk. My father, being the poor generous soul that he was, actually ended up giving mum $500 a week to live off. It was only for a few months because he didn't want to leave her without giving her some sort of a chance. On top of that, nobody can say that he screwed her over. In fact, this next plot twist will explain how much of a man my father is. Because he felt it was the man thing to do, he accepted full responsibility of the farm and went bankrupt from it. He's got the papers to prove it. He didn't recover from that until about six months ago. I'm putting that in bold because it will be important later in the next upcoming acts. Okay, well I always enjoy reading a good epic story on Voicey here and that one was a good one. I feel like stories like this are always a good warning to all of us. It just seems so easy to slip into a mental state where you just kind of give up. And it helps if you have supportive people around you, but really it's still up to you to take personal responsibility to make something out of your life. This person had what most people want in life. A partner who cares about them, a family, place to live. She even got to have a farm, her dream business job. It just goes to show that happiness comes from being content with what you have, not trying to pursue more and more. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.